first molecular gastronomy is not cooking. Gastronomy means reason, knowledge about food. And molecular gastronomy in particular is a science. It is a science that has to be done in a lab, as any science. For the book Building a Meal, there was one project of explaining science. When you cook, you have two kinds of phenomena. You have physical phenomena and you have chemical phenomena. When you grill a steak, it turns brown, this is chemistry. When you make a mayonnaise, you disperse oil into water, it's physics. Oil does not mix with water, it floats on the surface. If you give energy, then you divide the, the for example, look at this, at this movement. Now I cut the, the oil into two, but now into two, into two, into two. This one is cutting the oil into droplets. But this one is much more efficient because you have one, two, three, four, five, five multiplied by two, ten. So when you, when you whip, you divide ten times. So this and you see the transformation, it's, it's less fluid than it was. You have so many oil droplets, they're completely packed. There is no possibility to move. And if no droplet can move, then the mayonnaise cannot flow and the mayonnaise is firm. Cooking is first love. You have, when you cook for someone, it's a way of saying I love you. Uh, but it's also art. What does it mean? How is the art components mixed into the technical components? The second question was to explain molecular gastronomy. Then a third problem was to explain how it could change the way we are cooking and eat. I was using culinary books, as we all do. And um, there was one of these books saying that you should add the yolks two by two in a recipe of a, a soufflé. Why two by two? There is no reason. I decided to collect all these things. Um, they can be said proverbs or old wife tales. For example, here you have a recipe. When the sauce is sick, you add the lemon juice or a little vinegar. About 100 grams of oil for one yolk. This is completely useless. Quite frequently, it is wrong. If such information is true, then the question is to understand why it is true. A knowledge that is true among the, the vast immensity of false knowledge, this is like a gem, like a jewel.